Uh, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Nicholas Angelina. Uh, um, I was born in Lebanon. Uh, I'm Lebanese. Uh, I, um, I work um, with the International Wine Challenge. I represent, uh, uh, I represent uh, Lebanon as an ambassador for Lebanon uh, for the IWC. And recently we did, um, uh, they, they, William Reed, they did something called the World Best Vineyard uh, uh, was launched uh, last year. So I'm here just to uh, um, uh, introduce Chateau Umsiat uh, to everybody uh, and uh, to talk a little bit about Lebanon, about uh, the, uh, uh, the history of winemaking in Lebanon, the geographic, the geographic um, uh, location and uh, uh, to go through the presentation. Joseph is uh, with me on uh, the presentation live. Uh, uh, he's not leading because the connection there is not 100%. So he will show us around later. So uh, I would like to start uh, uh, talking about uh, the history of the winemaking in Lebanon that uh, go back to the Phoenicians. Uh, and uh, that we believe uh, uh, that we believe that they uh, uh, they started uh, uh, they started to uh, export uh, uh, the wine because they used to be the traders uh, in the Mediterranean uh, Sea. They exported the grapes and the wine to many of the islands, like in Sicily, like uh, to Santorini, like Sardinia, and uh, they um, uh, had like their colonies there. And um, so, uh, Umsiyat, Chateau Umsiyat, the meaning of Umsiyat is uh, the evenings in, uh, uh, in Lebanese. Uh, so, um, uh, the meaning of Umsiyat is, uh, uh, is the evenings. And um, uh, so, the location of the winery is in the mountain, in the middle of the Mount uh, Lebanon. And, uh, uh, and, um, uh, so uh, we are um, uh, very happy that uh, Whole Garden is uh, launching, uh, he launched already the winery. Uh, so uh, the winery is in the mountain and all the vineyard is around the winery. So the, the, far, the farthest uh, uh, distance is one hour, uh, uh, is one hour uh, from the winery. Uh, so it's uh, all the vineyards are located on uh, the mountains and the uh, Beka, mountain of the Beka facing the Beka, facing the anti-Lebanon and facing the Mediterranean. So many parcels, many different variety of grapes, uh, many different terroirs as well. Uh, and um, um, this uh, make uh, uh, a bit of uh, um, richness in the diversity of uh, climate, altitude, uh, and uh, terroir and soil as well. Uh, so uh, let me start to uh, share the uh, presentation. So uh, share screen, uh, here we are. Uh, and Here we are. So as you see the, on the map, you can see the tiny Lebanon uh, with uh, uh, the capital Beirut. And uh, you, you see the distance uh, uh, from Cyprus. It's a far distance, usually in a boat, like uh, on a speedboat, six hours on a speedboat. Um, so it's right in the middle of the Mediterranean uh, Sea. Um, the longevity of the coast is around 200 kilometers, and uh, it's wide. Uh, the widest uh, part of it is quite 55 kilometers. So, and in between, uh, it's, there is two high mountains in between where sit the Beka Valley. Um, so, uh, as I'm going here, we can see another a bigger map. Uh, of Lebanon, and you can see uh, on the po point where is uh, Chateau Umsiat. It's uh, five kilometers uh, uh, from the seaside, 
uh, and uh, uh, on right on the mountain at 900 meter altitude, the winery. Uh, so uh, men, there is vineyard around the winery uh, that uh, they benefit from the climate of the Mediterranean Sea and uh, who will bring a lot of minerality and at the same time uh, the cool climate in the evening because in the daytime it's very hot and in the evening uh, in the middle of August you need to put a jumper. Uh, so again, the, uh, the family uh, um, uh, Boussley man are uh, uh, on four generation wine producers and uh, they, um, uh, uh, they started to produce uh, the wine for the, for the uh, 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 monks and for the Joseph, just uh, adjust if I have the right uh, story, and as well for the, uh, 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 not only the monks, you said something like the uh, government, the people governing? Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, yes, we uh, started like uh, more than 200 years producing uh, the wine for the, uh, the monks. Uh, not for the government or for everyone uh, back there. Okay, here we can see uh, the valley where it's uh, one of the high uh, uh, vineyards. You can see uh, the mountain and the snow uh, opposite uh, and how deep are the vines and the slopes. Um, so again, you can see a view from the other side uh, the other view was on uh, the uh, uh, Mount of Lebanon, and here we have the view on the Beka Valley. You can see at, uh, 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 at the base of this uh, valley how we, we were like uh, 400 meters above the Beka Valley, which is uh, at 900 meters altitude. So we were here at 1,300 meters in one of the vineyards. You can see the soil, how uh, uh, chalk, uh, clay, uh, argile, and uh, uh, this uh, place in the whole the year, it's all the time wind, wind, wind. It's very windy. As you see the anti liban at the end, uh, at the end it's uh, uh, the border of the mountain with Syria. Uh, so again, uh, uh, all the vineyards are um, on slopes. Uh, you can see how stony are uh, uh, the terroir, and uh, uh, most of the terroir are stony like that. A lot of stone, like I would say, 30 to 40 percent of stone in the in the uh, in the vines, as you see them. Uh, again, uh, many uh, different exposures. Uh, on the mountain. Here uh, I probably scrolled uh, quickly, I don't know if you, everybody can see. Uh, one of the temple uh, just uh, near the vineyard, uh, it, uh, uh, this temple comes from the Greek Roman, uh, it's called Niha, from the Greek uh, uh, um, Roman time, and it's uh, above the temple of Bacchus. So everybody talk about the temple of Bacchus in Lebanon, but nobody knows that uh, next to the temple of Niha, uh, there is a planted vineyard and where I showed you earlier all the pictures. Here we are uh, in the cellar of uh, four generation uh, of uh, 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 winemaking uh, Boussley man and uh, these are the end forests where they used to age uh, the Arak. And uh, uh, I don't know if they used to age wine in that as well, Joseph, correct me. Yes, we use wine also, we use it for wine also. To put the wine as well. So, I, yeah. so here again, it's, um, you can see uh, on the, uh, down in the rocks, it used to be the, uh, uh, the fermentation uh, tank in the rock. So as you see, 
uh, these rocks are a fermentation tank, it's natural uh, to keep uh, a constant temperature for, uh, for the fermentation. Uh, and uh, again, it's an uh, old uh, winery uh, who was kept like it is. And uh, for all the visit visitors, they can visit it. And it's uh, not modified, kept as it was. Um, so as you see all the pictures of the stone, you see how big and small are the stone because this will, uh, will show how old, uh, uh, this will show how uh, old is uh, uh, the uh, why the cellar. So again, it is uh, it is the winery from outside. You see how it was built with bigger stone, smaller stone. So it's quite a very old building. And during the war, it was destroyed and rebuilt. Am I right, uh, Adosa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was rebuilt in uh, 1976. 76, as you see, there is some uh, 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 beton or some cement uh, part to just to re-put the stones uh, together. Uh, again, from the side, this is the old winery. Now we move to the new winery. As you see, all stainless steel control uh, temperature. Um, uh, and uh, again, you have a bigger uh, tank uh, outside overlooking the valley. Uh, we will see the valley life from uh, uh, with uh, now with Joseph because he's there. He can show us later uh, uh, the winery. Uh, Joseph, I can uh, uh, give you uh, uh, to continue just showing around as you are alive there, and uh, uh, just uh, uh, we are have on the page the three wines that Steve will jump in and uh, lead the uh, tasting. So, uh, Joseph, it's up to you. What shall I do with that? I can do it. Okay. Okay. Here is Joseph. Could I see uh, the valley in Lebanon? Uh, no, we can see you. Those okay. Are ah, yes, now we can. Now, now it's night here in Lebanon. Uh, I can show you a little bit uh, from up from the winery, the, the valley where we are located. Now we are facing the sea. There is a lot of fog uh, at this time for one, one and a half hour. This is a tank outside the winery. So now you are in the restaurant in the, I think you are in the restaurant uh, overlooking the valley and uh, Yeah. Yes, so it's it's quite foggy. You can see. So, what is the temp temperature now there? Now it's around uh, 17, 16 to 17. 17, and in the and in, at night down it to, drop down to 14, uh, 13, 14 degrees. That's just... ah, good. Uh, so, um, uh, obviously, if we want to go to the vineyard, it's like uh, 20, all the vineyards are like between 20 minutes uh, to one hour drive. Uh, uh, even some of them are less from the vineyard. Yes, uh, if we ha don't have fog, I can show you some here ah. near to me in the mountain. I show it to you when you was in the restaurant last time. Yes. Uh, face to us, uh, but it's night and foggy. Uh, it's it's more, less than 20 minutes. And the others is uh, between uh, 
35, 40 minutes to one hour. It's uh, directly in the mountain uh, facing uh, this vineyard near to the, uh, to the winery. It's facing the sea. The other is facing the Bikaa Valley. Like you, you show it in the picture. On the picture, yes. And I believe uh, as well, uh, there is some uh, uh, vineyard up to 1,800. Uh, and uh, the big amount of the vines are at 1,500 the uh, uh, red wine. Uh, uh, mainly the most, uh, most of our vineyard, it's 140 to 150, 1,400 to 1,500, yes. Most of our vineyard are at this altitude. We have yeah. some. Uh, we are tasting the altitude at 1,800 to see the quality, the product, the wine, how it be there. I can add that at the winery, there is, at the chateau, there is a, um, uh, it is on the website, it is, there is a accommodation like a bed and breakfast and there is a restaurant in the winery. Uh, maybe Joseph, you can show us the rest a little bit with the view. Are you there now? Ah, you are there. Yeah, yeah. Just you want to show around you. And you want me to show you the restaurant also? Yes, just show us where. How do we see the view uh, from uh, from the? It's on the top of the winery, the restaurant, with with the view. Yes, with all all these. Uh, it's a glass window, so it's obviously not open yeah. now, but it's, now it's closed. Uh, it's open to the, yeah, all the pine trees around and uh, good. Joseph, do you want to add anything? Um, no, thanks. We had a couple of questions just before we get to um, Steve's tasting. Yeah. Um, what do you think the optimum also, from altitude is for making wine in Lebanon. What do we think? Sorry, I the, didn't. The best altitude is for making wine in Lebanon. Uh, personally, I think at, for making or to growing the vine. Growing the vines. On, on my opinion, I believe there is a lot of potential to grow at a lower. Uh, at a lower altitude with different variety of grapes, like they do in uh, Sicily, in Sardinia, in, um, in uh, Greece, and they, they should uh, take the courage and, uh, and bring a different uh, variety of grapes and experiment them at a lower altitude. Uh, now, for what it is in Lebanon, uh, I, I believe uh, this altitude uh, that uh, uh, Joseph is growing on between 1,400 1, 1,500, uh, some of them are uh, lower and some of them even higher. Um, this is uh, a good altitude uh, for the, for the uh, temperature and the climate and the picking time and the time of maturation of the grapes. Uh, uh, like for the Obeide, I don't know, Joseph, when do you pick the Obeide, who is an indigenous grape from Lebanon? Joseph? Uh, I think Joseph is, uh, Joseph is muted. Should we move to uh, exciting now? Uh, sorry, Joseph. sorry, sorry, Nicholas. Uh, uh, I was asking. Albaidi, we pick up it at uh, first of October. Albaidi at one thousand four hundred first of October. Yeah. So you will have the right time for uh, maximize the uh, mat maturity and. Uh, uh, of course. Good. So, do you share my opinion if you, you grow other indigenous, other uh, Lebanese grape in uh, a lower altitude, uh, more next to the sea? Uh, we are trying to plant a Certico at uh, 300 meters facing the sea. It's, uh, it's uh, 200 meters uh, from the sea or 300 meters far from the sea. From the sea. 
Yes, uh, we have this project now, and uh, all the other uh, grapes are planted uh, at a higher altitude. Only aesthetic will, will try it. Uh, you there. are trying the aesthetic or the lower the altitude. Okay. Uh, uh, good. So, uh, uh, again, I think uh, there is a, a too many, uh, the typology in Lebanon, uh, it's a uh, with the variation of the terroir, if you go up to the north, it's a, uh, you see the, uh, it's really white. The terroir is white, white, and you, you go more south, it's more red. Uh, and when you go in the mountain, you just obviously see the stones everywhere. So I think this um, give a plus for the uh, expression of the grapes as the terroir is. Uh, richness in variation. So I think we have to go back on the screen and uh, is there anything else that uh, we should go? Is there any other question? Uh, not right now. We have to move to the tasting with Steve. Let's uh, move to Steve. Uh, so Steve, um, I, it is shared. Shall I put the that's it. Hey, Steve. Okay. Hi. Can everyone hear me? Okay. So I'm Steve. Um, I'm going to do the tasting today. And um, basically, uh, I'll say a little bit about uh, how I decided to work with uh, Umsia. And uh, let me just uh, put it around here. Uh, sit. Okay, good. That's better. So, yeah. So, um, basically, I, I, I blended these wines. This is the, the Obedi that we have to begin with. And say why we started working with it. Um, Obedi is a local grape and it is a Lebanese grape. Uh, the DNA has been tested it's only grown or it was only grown in Lebanon. It's um, a very thin skinned grape. You can actually see the seeds through the skins apparently um, and it was originally used for Iraq um, and obviously Joseph knows that better than me. <laughs> so it, it's it's something that I'm very keen to work with indigenous varieties. And we've also got a program with UMSIAT to work with Assertico, which isn't uh, an indigenous variety now, but it probably was back in the day when the Phoenicians were trading with uh, the likes of Santorini. So it may well have come originally from, from Lebanon and wasn't grown any longer. So Joseph has, uh, has a couple of vineyards with Assertico in, which is great. Um, and the other one I know that Joseph is looking around uh, for a project on uh, Meroir as well. So I think it's important to, to have the indigenous varieties. So the Abedi is, um, produces a, what I think is a, a quite soft wine, quite oily. It's perfect with Meze. Um, it's a slightly aromatic and sometimes um, is a little bit prone to oxidation. So Joseph in the winery is very delicate with it. He's got to make sure that there's absolutely no oxygen uptake. Uh, otherwise, it oxidizes very quickly. Um, and when we were blending this, uh, basically, uh, we just put a, a little splash of Sauvignon, and, and, and Joseph has got some really nice, good, acidic mineral Sauvignon, and a little bit of Viognier, just to, to, to pep up the, the aromatic profile and also adjust the acidity. Um, but having said that, it was only a small amount. It's like 91, 92% Obedi, and, and the balance is those two grapes. So in the palate, it's got a lovely um, creaminess and as I say, slightly oiliness. And it, it's just a great match with, with uh, Lebanese food. Yeah, it's quite exotic, um, easy drinking, um, not too acidic. So it goes with, a, with, it's not just for seafood. This is with more of the, the falafel and the, and the dips. So I think it works really well. It's got a nice lemon finish to it. So it's, it, it's not, it's not fat. Thank you. This not, is not a falafel. Close. Not too close. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
yeah, so we have a falafel here, which is uh, it's going to go really well. Falafel. Baked falafel. So, any questions on uh, on the obedi? No, no questions yet, Steve. Um, I'll jump in if anything comes. No problem. Okay, so so as I said, we're, we're uh, the reason the reason why we work with uh, Umsiad is because. Um, to me, they're more Mediterranean in their, their attitude. I mean, uh, there's, and I'm not saying this is a wrong thing at all. I mean, there's some really brilliant wines in, in the Lebanon, but a lot of the Lebanese wines are, are more built on the Bordeaux model. Um, and and Umsiat is built more on, I think, a Mediterranean model. And the reason why we as Holgarten got in, 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 in touch uh, with Umsiat is because we believe that uh, the Lebanon is part of the Mediterranean and we wanted wines that reflected that Mediterranean heritage if you like so that was important so in terms of the uh, the, the red wines um, we, we are going to show two red wines uh, one of them um, is a is an interesting blend have you got the desire the desire the red thank you so we're going to go into the red in a second uh, and that's the rouge desire and it's Again, it's it's a very Mediterranean blend in a way. It's uh, it's got uh, a, a nice slug of about thirty percent, and about the same quantity twenty 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 five percent Syrah, and the balance is is Cabernet. So Cabernet, I mean, there's a lot of Cabernet in in Lebanon. So. This is the uh, Rouge Desire, uh, 2017. The other thing that I like about Umsia is that um, there's not an over-reliance on oak because we want these Mediterranean flavors to sing through and also the, the terroir. I mean, they, they, it's a very distinct terroir that you're getting in the Lebanon. We wanted wines which were unoaked. So I think with the oak, you taste the oak very often, whether it's French oak, American oak or whatever. But um, I think for the grapes to really sing through and, and for the, the terroir to really express itself it's great to have unoaked wines so as you can see the color is is fairly light it's not a typical block busting um almost new world style that uh, some lebanese wines are it, it's it's pale it's got low alcohol i think it's around 12 and a half percent alcohol um they're very food wine uh, orientated they, they've got good acidity good length and and they don't overwhelm the food and i think these are great wines for mezzi so as I say, predominant grape Tempranillo in this, but with a, a splash of Cabernet, splash of, a splash of Syrah, and a splash of Sansa. Would you ever recommend serving that one chilled, Steve? Uh, it's chilled. <laughs> it is chilled today. It's 30 degrees outside, and it's just come out of a fridge. So it's, it's nicely chilled, yeah. Oh, so, and it, and it, it's absolutely brilliant because I mean, obviously, Lebanon is a, is generally certainly when you're on the coast and where the most of the restaurants are Beirut, it gets pretty warm. And and if you're having a plate of mezzi, um, and you want want something a red wine to go with it, you don't want a wine which is more like a soup course. You want something with a little chill on it. And I think these lighter wines with higher acidity go really well with a chill. I mean, a big soupy alcoholic wine. It, it, it needs chilling anyway, but it it doesn't really help. So touches of those kind of flavors. Um, and in the palate, it's really smooth, light. It's got a little bit of grip on the finish, but that's all. So yeah, it's really nicely rounded. It's got um, really strawberry through coming through. Yeah, Ben. Sorry, uh, could you remind us what grapes um, went into the blend for dessert? Yeah, it's Tempranillo, about thirty percent, and then uh, around twenty twenty five percent Cabernet, and then uh, Syrah, and then Sinso or Sanso. Okay. Okay, so this is sort of uh, the entry level around the entry level of this uh, of this property 
and then we go to the big boy, which is um, which is the Grand Reserve, and the Grand Reserve is is Mount Le Lebanon Appalachian. So Mount Mount Lebanon, I think the vineyards are around. That's certainly a minimum of twelve hundred meters above sea level, um, and it's closer to the Mediterranean, so more Mediterranean influence here. Um, and as you saw from the, the, the slideshow earlier on, uh, if you saw the, the, the vineyard overlooking uh, the temple, that's where the Syrah comes from. That's the, the Syrah in this element, in this wine, comes from the, the temple vineyard, if you like, the Clos de Temple. So um, really interesting wines, really structured, um, quite intense. And once again, without oak. I mean, this it could have been. This wine is big enough to put into oak, but I think it expresses its terroir and where it comes from a lot better. Uh, the prominent prominent grape in this actually is Merlot, um, and it's around about fifty percent Merlot. And then the balancing twenty five percent is twenty twenty five percent of each is Cabernet and Syrah, but it's 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 unoaked. And, and I think with this one, you really get, um, you saw the, the rocks in, in, in the soils, you saw the, the chalkiness. This wine is, is a big wine. It's got lots of flavor, but it's, um, it's got great balancing acidity as well. It's got fairly high alcohol as well, but you don't taste it so much because of that really good acidity. And on the nose, even though it's Merlot predominant, um, you get the plums from the Merlot, but you still get that spicy sort of um, black currant and, and black pepper from the Syrah coming through fairly strong on this wine. So to me, it reminds me very much of a, a Mediterranean wine. It reminds me very much of a maybe a really good uh, crew uh, Cote de Languedoc, something from the south of France. It's got that kind of feel about it. It doesn't have anything to do with Bordeaux in its, in its style. Joseph, do you want to add anything to the wines? Good. So, sorry. Any questions? The connection is bad. Sorry, Steve. Hello. Yeah. Joseph, you can hear me? No, no, the connection is bad. Uh, what yeah, you ask? Okay, never mind. We'll we'll carry on. I think uh, just uh, just to mention that, um, as we mentioned earlier on, we have the assertive go as well, which we're not tasting today, but it's amazing. It's an amazing story. The Phoenicians or the the Lebanese uh, were the guys that resettled Santorini after the volcanic eruption in 1620. So they resettled in about 1000 BC. And wherever the Phoenicians went, I think they, they took certainly two things. One, the alphabet, and, and the second, uh, the vine. So it's very likely that they may have taken the Assyrtico vine to Santorini. So it's, this is it coming back to its homeland. So Assyrtico from Lebanon. Great value and, and one of a kind. So Good. Any, anyone, any more questions? I think, um, I think Nicola might want to do a bit of tasting with Mezzi or whatever. But otherwise, that's me Please. on the table. We've yeah. got a few um, questions come in. Um, the last one, Grand Reserve, uh, what is it aged in? It's aged in tank. Um, it's a classic, it's pigeage on the, on the, on the grapes, um, fermented around 28 degrees, uh, selected yeasts, but uh, stainless steel. No, no, uh, no oak at all. Is there, oh, I'm going to read this one out. Is there any particular reason that the red grapes appear to fare more than the white? And does the stony landscape have any impact on growing and taste? Oh, as if Joseph could hear, he'd probably answer it, but I, I, Nicola could answer that one. But I, I think historically um, people, it was the French who settled and they wanted to, to create almost like a little Bordeaux style. Um, so it was predominantly red grapes, but I think if you've grown at altitude as, as most of the grapes are, and especially when you're getting as high as some of the, the, the vineyards on Mount Lebanon and, and higher, where you've got 1800 meters, you can grow uh, white grapes quite, quite easily. And I think as, as the shift, as people's uh, taste has shifted away from red wine to white wine, I think you'll see more, more and more white wine being planted in Lebanon or white grapes and, and more and more people drinking white wine from Lebanon, but I think historically it used to be just red wine and rosé and then the, the occasional white, but I think 
uh, more and more emphasis on, on white wine production. And quickly rewinding to the Desir, um, would you compare it to any other styles from around the world? Uh, ooh, it's a tricky one. I, I think I, I would probably uh, maybe compare it to more of a, like a, a light, light Rioja or but an no, no, to Hoven, or maybe even a, a lighter red uh, Longadoc, I think, or possibly, possibly even a lighter, light, lighter Cote du Rhone. That kind of style. Yeah. Um, and a couple of questions here for Joseph or for Nicholas, if he's yep. about. I'm going to nip out, and Nicholas is going to come in. Ah, welcome back. Hello again. Um, how much of a baby do you produce annually, and where does most of it go? How much? Uh, just uh, a baby. A baby. Uh, the, the capacity production of a baby um, is uh, is big, uh, especially with uh, uh, with uh, uh, Umsiat. Uh, at the moment, uh, uh, as as a wine, it's not uh, the vineyards. There is a lot of vineyards. They can go up to uh, half a million bottle, um, uh, but uh, at the moment they produce arak with that. So. These uh, vineyards are very much uh, suitable to produce the uh, Obedi wine. There is much more uh, 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 grapes that are that um, uh, they are sold. Correct me if I am uh, uh, saying something wrong, Joseph. Uh, so at the moment, uh, the, uh, the total production, how many, how many bottles uh, of Obedi are you releasing, uh, like 2019 vintage? Now we are producing around uh, 18,000 bottles, but we have a grape to produce uh, more than 500 because we use it for Arak. So uh, already the vine, it's... Uh, 35 to 50 years old and we have a lot a lot of grape uh, we can produce a lot of wine from this grape so we can go from uh, if we uh, we can produce uh, now we're producing 18,000 uh, 80,000 not 18 80,000 we can go up to five six hundred the thousand easy could you explain to us quickly what uh, Arak is Sorry. Could you, quickly, could you quickly explain to us what Arak is? Arak, uh, we fermented the grape with distill it. We have uh, an alcohol, we add anise, and we redistill it another time. So we have Arak. This is Arak. It's like the Uzo, like the Uzo, like the uh, Raki. Yeah. Uh, stuff then. Good. So we, we did some, uh, as we are doing this um, uh, on a social uh, distance and we prefer to be outdoor. So we picked uh, a, a, a place uh, between London and uh, uh, where Steve uh, lives is in Kingston uh, called Noura, is a Lebanese restaurant. And uh, uh, so we did some food who can eventually match, uh, uh, match, uh, what we did, like the hummus beiruti, is a specialty. Can you? S everybody can see it. Sorry, I'm. I don't want to drop the oil on the comp on <laughs> on Steve laptop. <laughs> and uh, this is a vegetarian uh, a kibbe, as Steve is a vegetarian, a pescatarian, and the vine leaf the originally Greek uh, Lebanese uh, violin. Well, we have some aesthetic, so we have to be. <laughs> we have another uh, aubergine uh, uh, smoked uh, dip uh, with a pomegranate. So I think uh, all this, and I think I had one something with uh, the falafel and the habajin as well. So, uh, all these wines will match perfectly uh, the three wines. Even so, the, the, the Grand Reserve will, will go really well with our uh, here. Uh, it, it, this is my favorite. It's the Armenian 
is the Armenian uh, uh, recipe of a pizza, very flat, thin pizza with lamb, uh, spices. Uh, I don't know if everybody can see it. Uh, it's a bit, ah, uh, oh yes, now it's better. So uh, this will work really well uh, with the Grand Reserve as well. So, uh, so we have to have some food here. So uh, I don't know, uh, Steve, did you try the vine leaves? So the hummus, it's, uh, uh, I think it goes really well with the robede and it goes really well with a chilled Rouge Désir uh, because we had it at the fridge before we tasted it and uh, it's a amazing, let me just put, hmm. Amazing, the creaminess of the hummus, the spicy chilies, and the olive oil cut through with the vibrant fruits, red fruits, I will say Morello cherries, very fresh, fresh temperature as well is amazing. So we have the right balance of a, a proper uh, releve um, flavored hummus and um, the pure fruits and no sweetness. It's a, just the sweetness of the fruits. Uh, again, uh, I would love to, for, for me, my challenge, uh, Joseph, I think we see you uh, all the way around. Yes, now we see you better. Uh, so the Grand Reserve, with the lahm bajin, with the Armenian minced lamb, with a lot of different spices. And uh, uh, this I will put a bit of a lemon, a lemon squeeze on the top. And uh, I will go for a bite. Oh, it's the, for the meat. Mm. Joseph, uh, a question from the audience. Um, apart from modern machinery and technology, what else have you tried with regards to winemaking for ancestors? Uh, I have changed all the winery. Uh, it's all uh, the new, new equipment. So uh, you can see it in the photos. Uh, and life, uh, all the tanks are new, all the wine are new, all the equipment are new. Uh, I have changed everything. The old winery, we keep it uh, for uh, uh, visits, for visiting uh, only. And with regards to the Assertico, sorry about the feedback on this. Um, are you looking to plant any other Mediterranean grape varieties? Uh, for the moment, uh, no. We are uh, standing on the what we plan. Uh, for the future, uh, yes, we maybe we uh, we find another varieties and we plant it here. Uh, we searching another varieties that uh, coming from two or three thousand years from Lebanon to replant it in Lebanon. Thank you. And one final question. Um, what would you say the split between red and white wine is? Sorry? Um, how much please? red wine do you make compared to white wine? I make uh, around uh, uh, 700,000 bottles at the moment, around 250 white wine, and the rest is red wine.
Perfect. I will say that uh, regarding the, uh, as Steve mentioned, uh, looking into the Meroir, and there is another indigenous variety of grape called Sesi as well. So probably we will, uh, we will uh, see what uh, will that lead. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time this evening, gentlemen. Nicholas, Joseph from Lebanon and, and Steve. It's been a very informative tasting. Um, yeah, thank you very much and good night to everybody that's been watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.